Yeah, hello and welcome uh, to the panel Monetizing DJ Mixes on Spotify and Apple Music, uh, hosted by Proton here today. Nice. Uh, I'm Michael Ritter, Michael Ritter in German, uh, Label Partnerships Manager at Proton here in Berlin. With me from Proton is Sam Packer, Head of Operations at Proton. Before we dive into what uh, Proton is and what we do in relation to the uh, topic here today, I want to give a very warm welcome to Ilona, also known as Intactogene, and Chris Ippel. Thank you for being here today. Thanks. Uh, Ilona, why don't you start and say uh, two, three sentences about yourself? Okay, so yeah, my name is Ilona. As a DJ and producer, I'm called Intactogene. I still haven't decided how you pronounce that in English. Um, <laughs> and I mainly DJ, but I also produce. But um, yeah, I would predominantly say I'm more of a DJ than a producer, I would say. Yeah, because that's what I do the most. I play it in clubs. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm Chris Sippel. I'm coming, I think, more from the pop background. I was producing with some pop acts and German band Ich und Ich, for example, or the Petra Boys, which I see there is a um, cover, and started DJing 10 years ago and I'm getting more and more into it, actually. And yeah, recently doing it with Proton. <laughs> and you actually also run a label at uh, Proton. Exactly. Alison. Alison. Yeah. yeah. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Thanks for being here today. I'm going to hand over to Sam. Yeah, hey everybody. Thanks for coming today. Uh, Sam Packer, I'm the director of uh, operations with Proton. I oversee basically the side of the business that's not engineering, so everything else, the curation team, marketing, our label support, which we pride ourselves on. We're a distributor of about 2,500 labels, so that's what Proton does. Um, so we're going to go over the agenda for today. Uh, we'll start by going over a quick introduction of DJ mixes on Spotify and Apple Music, what that means to Proton specifically. And then we're going to move to our panel discussion with our panelists, the interesting part of the discussion. And then finally, we'll end with a QA. and a um, Anything we don't get to today, or if we have you know, questions that come up that we can't get to because of time, we're going to have a webinar on June 1st. We have a QR, big QR code up here. I was Very a big, big, I printed it out. Um, and we'll have that at the end. If you want to join our webinar, we'll go do a deep dive into how to create mixes and how to you know, work with labels and do this and that. Um, uh, Proton just announced lots, a couple weeks ago that basically anyone can now create a DJ mix through our platform. It's not limited just to the people that work with our labels anymore. So it's a, it's a huge, it's going to open it up for everyone to even put out mixes on Spotify and Apple Music now, which is a big deal. All right, so a little bit of the history. Uh, for years, ever since, I remember, I've been involved with Proton since the beginning, since 2001, and even after Spotify came out, uh, our, our goal was to have DJ mixes on Spotify. I mean, Proton Radio is what we started as, as a radio station. So we're a bit, we were a big DJ platform, and it was always our dream when we became a distributor to have mixes on um, Spotify and Apple Music. And so we thought, we, we, you know, how do we get there? What do we do? How do we make this happen? And during the pandemic in 2020, was our perfect opportunity. A lot of uh, DJs were not, didn't have gigs at that time uh, and didn't have opportunities to put out mixes. Uh, it was kind of a downtime, as we all know, it was horrible. Um, and so we created our platform at that time with our promo pool, which we'll talk about shortly. And our Proton system basically allows anyone, as I mentioned, to create a mix using tracks from Proton's licensed catalog um, of distributed labels. Uh, uh, so, and also to monetize it. So the label, the artist, and the DJ all get paid. They all get paid, and that's that's something that hasn't been seen before as far as DJs getting paid to make uh, mixes. So there are three categories of mixes uh, that we'll talk about today. The first type is a curator mix. So Proton's team, we developed a curation pro uh, project where we invited a group of DJs to make special mixes uh, using Proton's catalog, and we gave them access to music from hundreds of our labels. Uh, this special group and then they chose the tracks and made the mixes that we and we distributed them to spotify and apple music um, so here are two examples of curator mixes um, in tactical and chris's uh, mix they went through they chose the tracks themselves so they could kind of match their style uh, they could they could choose the tracks you should check them out later. you should check out the mixes yeah if you go to the proton radio channel on spotify you can see our all of our mix series we're publishing one mix a day right now so it's it's a lot um, and then just to reiterate too, like the tracks that they chose uh, were, are all licensed under Proton's catalog. So the, the time it took to do the licensing was nothing. So 
as you know, like traditional DJ mixes for licensing can take quite a while because you have to wait for people to get back to you and everything. With this, the licensing is already taken care of under Proton's blanket distribution um, agreements with the labels. So it was a, it's a big deal. Um, and then here are some other of our curators and Proton's curator mixes have generated over 26 million plays on Spotify um, to date. So we're only expecting that to go up with not only our curators, but with anyone who makes DJ mixes as well. So the second type of uh, mixes are, is an artist mix. This is where a, a Proton artist, or someone affiliated with our labels, will log in and uh, they, can, they can make a DJ mix of only their tracks, but on all the different labels. So you can see here that um, Valeron and Ina both created artist mixes, but these are all, they could be on different Proton labels, uh, released on different Proton labels. And then the last category is like a big category beyond uh, these two mix types. There's other formats. Uh, you can see that Namito decided for his 25th anniversary uh, release as an artist. He wanted he had an unmixed version that was put on Beatport, but to make it more interesting, he created a mixed version just for Spotify and Apple Music. Um, so that's something that he did as a label manager. His, his label is with us, UberC Music. So, Siona Records also did an anniversary mix of just their tracks. Um, and then we have a, a couple artist examples here. So Michael, for example, has his Mystic Garden series and he has his own cover art. You can have your own cover art um, and kind of create your own brand through the mix. Yeah, like mix series. It doesn't have to be Proton branded. It can be literally anything you Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you might ask, uh, OK, I've already seen there's DJ mixes on Apple Music right now from like Adam Bay or, or um, Charlotte DeWitt or whoever. Uh, how is Proton different, right? Um, generally, most DJs don't have access to Spotify and Apple Music, these uh, specialty mixes, because those platforms are working with exclusive deals with certain people. So it's really the barrier to entry is really high to get a, a mix on these platforms right now. So through Proton, it's much easier. And other platforms like SoundCloud and YouTube also have DJ mixes, but they're not paying the DJ, obviously. The DJ doesn't get paid for the mix. Um, at Proton, however, um, all artists can publish mixes and everyone gets paid, even the, even the DJ. So, so Michael's going to talk about the, the process now, like how does it work? Exactly. You might have been asking yourself, how does it actually work? And to understand the way uh, the DJ mixes actually work and the licensing, we actually have to take a look at uh, Proton's in-house promo pool that we've built uh, for our label managers and DJs. Uh, you can see an example here of Soul Selectors, a label some of you might know, uh, which is in our distribution. And on this page, uh, this is actually where Soul Selectors can add subscribers that will receive the promos. Um, yeah, so you can see a list of existing subscribers there. And on the right side, you can uh, see the button, add new subscriber. So if they actually added a new subscriber, um, it would show up like in the uh, promo pool feed in the DJs or artists or radio stations profile that is added to the promo pool. So then on the left side, you can see the main page and then the releases will show up like under uh, another in the feed. So what's the innovative part about this? Because most of you might know in-flight and other uh, promo pools. Uh, the innovative part is actually that once a new subscriber is added, uh, the DJ, artist or radio st uh, station not only gets the free uh, music, but actually they get... Uh, the license to basically feature the tracks uh, in their DJ mixes on Spotify and earn per stream um, on every track. Now this might sound a bit confusing, but uh, I'm going to show you an example using my own label. So you can see the existing subscribers that we've added. And on the right side, you can see uh, that we actually added Miss Monique to our label, to the promo pool. And she actually accepted the invitation. And then she created a mix, which you can see here on Spotify. You can see the track list. But actually, if we look more closely, we can see that she did feature uh, over nine labels, or I think it's, it's nine or 10 labels in here. And she actually did not have to deal with any kind of licensing, like uh, Sam mentioned before. She was just added uh, to the promo pools and was therefore able to make these mixes and is actually making a, a royalty share on every stream uh, per track. And um, yeah, this actually has some really significant effects on the performance of artists. So here you see an example of David. Some of you might know him. On the left side there, I'm comparing his monthly followers, uh, sorry, monthly listeners on Spotify with myself. I did not get featured in a lot of DJ mixes yet as an artist. He actually did, which you can see on the right side. So in the 
appears on section on Spotify, you will see that he was actually featured in plenty of DJ mixes. And this actually increases his amount of monthly uh, active listeners because it accounts to his profile. So we can actually see another example here. Again, I did not get featured. These other two artists did get featured. Uh, and this is actually an example where they only got featured in one or two mixes. And it drives up the monthly listeners uh, significantly. And uh, yeah, as you all know, this also plays into account when um, pitching music to Spotify's curators for editorial playlists. So it's uh, something really um, yeah, interesting for artists. But besides artists, uh, there's also a lot um, going on, on the label side and opportunities here. Yeah, that Sam is going to talk about. Yeah, so kind of what we're focusing on right now at Proton is working with our labels to create artist channels on Spotify, and then their artists are po they're posting mixes from their artists on their channel and like branding it. You can see here like Soul Selectus is doing this. Another uh, channel is Cafe de Anatolia. I don't know; they're a big streaming label on YouTube, but they they noticed that this was an opportunity to increase their listenership on on Spotify as well, and so they're po also posting many mixes, and so all of their fans can go to their channel specifically, and it raises the monthly listeners, obviously, for their brand. So we're putting it back in the hands of the labels to, to kind of promote themselves and giving them the tools to, to do so through Proton system. So. Exactly. All right. So we're going to start our discussion now. <laughs> Lots of information. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we could just start off with a in general uh, question for you guys. Um, how before doing your mixes did you listen to did you know the mixes were available on spotify and apple music and what was the feedback from your fans as you did your first mix uh if any so i i was not aware that uh, these mixes are existing so for me it was completely new and the whole thing that i mean i'm putting up dj mixes on soundcloud since many years but to to get them monetized uh, was uh, really new yeah mm. so well done <laughs> How about you? Uh, I did, but only from really, really big artists that were like invited by Spotify. So stuff like Above and Beyond or like, so like really, really big. I was noticing it, uh, but not like in a big way and lots of them. So I didn't, I did listen to some, but not loads, um, but I was aware of them. And the second part of the question was how my listeners Just, reacted, right? They're your yeah. friends, your fans. Um, Actually, the funny thing was that um, I think some of my fans listened to it, but it was different people listening to them. Like, I noticed afterwards that, first of all, the producers I played started following me because usually no producer knows that a DJ plays their tracks, which is really, really sad. Like, nobody knows that, uh, especially for producers. Like, I always, I have friends who produce and I play their tracks all the time and they're super, super happy to hear it because they never know. And uh, for me, that has a lot to do with who gets the credit? It's often the DJs, even though the producers are the ones that enable the DJs to, to make great sets and to and they never get the credit. It's not even about money, it's more about the recognition. And um, so I think this is what happened when I when I put out my mix, suddenly all these producers started following me. Yeah, it's a little bit unfair also. It's no? super that unfair. Also the SoundCloud mixes that none of them gets any yeah. share, right? And, and like, uh, so this is what happened, that suddenly producers were starting to follow me and were like, it's so nice you played my music. Especially as I often play re smaller producers, I really like finding tracks that nobody knows and that are new and that's often really new producers. And for them, I think it's super exciting that someone played their stuff and especially if it's visible that someone played their stuff because it's on Spotify. So I think this yeah. is the main thing that happened that um, I got a lot of reaction from that yeah. more than like fans in the, ca in the sense of just listening to music. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't have a screenshot of that, but actually if the mixed version that you can see here, for, the, for example, in the track list, if it gets more streams than the original one, it also appears in the artist profile of the producer, which is uh, actually a nice thing. Yeah, exactly. So uh, how was the making the mix different in terms of uh, possibly also artistic freedom? You know, since it's Spotify, you can't use like some samples that are not like part of the actual track because they are matched. Mm. What was the main difference here uh, for you? Maybe for, for me, I've, I felt a big freedom because I knew that all the stuff has been licensed before mm -hmm. and uh, felt also a little bit like, like a family thing because I, I could take all the tracks from Proton of the labels I love. So I used actually extensive uh, background loops and additional production to, to make this mix. And many of my, my uh, people thought actually that this is an album. 
they didn't realize in the first place that, that, that there are many different nice. artists. <laughs> so they thought it's a Chris Sipple album called Alice in Wonderland. So that Do was a little bit schräg, <laughs> weird. <laughs> because your label is also called Alice in, yeah. yeah. Did you feature a lot of tracks from your label as well? I think uh, like three, four, yeah. yeah. A lot of Mango Alley, uh, which I really like, uh, Hyperion Rising. Yeah, of course, I've, I've mixed, mixed it with my, also with Namito. Your mix is actually almost an artist mix because you are involved in a lot of the tracks themselves. 50-50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, nice. How about you? It was really challenging because I'm extremely picky about what I play. Like, I think this is uh, like curse and blessing at the same time, but I'm extremely picky. Like a few weeks ago, I, um, I went through Beatport um, like, and you know, you pre-select on my Beatport. This is not about Beatport, but the numbers are interesting. So it was 1,150 tracks I went through and this is people I follow and I bought 30. So I'm extremely picky. And so... How long did it take? Two days. For <laughs> <laughs> well, one show? Or well, that would be one set, yeah. yeah. But uh, like... Um, <laughs> but so um, I was off six, so that was helpful. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> like, um, but... Um, so for me, this was very different because I was limited in the labels I could actually use because I had to use the ones that are on Proton. And um, because I play Progressive House and I play quite... I, I think it's quite specific, the kind of Progressive House I play, and there's not that much of it in general. And so then there's even more so not a lot of it like on Proton. So for me, this was it was kind of cool because I like a challenge. So I was going through all the labels and like going through everything. And so what that meant was that I suddenly found labels I didn't know because I had to find them. Like I was like, okay, you need to find 11 tracks at least to make an hour. Like we're gonna go do this. And so I found labels I didn't know of before. So that was really yeah. cool. Yeah. Just one note. It's of course only the labels who are also willing to do this. So there yeah. are a lot of labels uh, who say, no, we don't want to uh, okay. license yeah. the music away we don't want actually mixed versions of our tracks and okay. um, so only the ones that are willing to do it uh, are also available yeah uh, so there's some limitation to it of course yeah, yeah but in a way it was it was cool because it was it was a completely different approach like i couldn't just go off and find this one artist and then i look at the label and then oh there's another artist on that label oh and someone remixed and then it's like you go down a rabbit hole on beatport and then it's like hours and suddenly you're like oh my god but um but it was different because i couldn't do that i had to take a different approach and so in a way that was really interesting and it made me find new artists and new music which was really cool yeah because yeah. yeah. it was probably stuff that was out of my bubble because i think often you are in bubbles if you like certain labels and certain artists often they're all like interconnected somehow and so i had to go off and just p type in progressive files and go through every single label that said they released that which half the time they didn't i felt but yeah. um so that was yeah it made me be yeah. a little bit more creative with my digging for tracks yeah yeah that's cool did you like the fact that it's uh, the possibility to use the tracks for the mixes is connected to the promo pool and that you get it for free and would you have been as motivated if you had to like buy the tracks to use them mm. Yeah, of course, it's great that you that you can choose out of the catalog from Proton. And um, also that you can also place your own tracks uh, next to the tracks you, you love from other great artists and see how that works. Yeah. That was also interesting for me. And as you say, limitations also in the creative process are always bring, bring out something interesting, uh, that you are li limited to a certain choice. I had actually a good experience, but mm -hmm. I also shortened tracks. I shortened my own tracks. Some tracks are only used for 30 seconds. Yeah. Somehow I was more creative with this mix than with my SoundCloud mixes. It's, it's a feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Yeah, so um, is it important to you as an artist, DJ or label manager to actually get paid for mixes? Because there are some platforms out there that don't uh, give you credit in, in form of royalties, uh, either as a DJ or even artist no, or even label. Said that it's, it's unfair that uh, DJ is putting out music and nobody who's the, the people who are actually doing the music, the producers are not getting at least mentioned, you know, or, or, or paid. Uh, no. That's, uh, that's not, not a cool thing. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, what I just said earlier, I think the money wasn't so much of a thing because 
I mean, to be really honest, I don't have that many followers that, I mean, we all know how much Spotify pays. Like I would have to have an, so, so many plays that, that would actually come out and uh, that I could buy coffee or something. So it's like, um, so, you know, and um, so that's not it. Like I'm not at the place where that would be, that would even be like relevant. However, for me, it was really, really cool to give credit to the producers. And that's, I, can, I can't do that anywhere. I mean, yes, of course, I could like post a track list every time I post a set on SoundCloud. However, who will see that? Or I tag them, who will see that? Know, like that's, you know. Not well, only people listen to SoundCloud, they listen to Spotify and Apple Music. And yeah. so this was a great yeah. way that they're like, you know, you listen to it and you see the track. You don't have to, there's no need to actually actively look at a track list or whatever. And the producers see it in there, like Spotify for artists. Like yeah. you see it, yeah. like I was featured in one and I'm like, oh, okay, someone, and that's super nice. Like it's such a, such a nice feeling when someone plays your track. Like I yeah, think the true. first time someone played a track and I was there, I nearly cried. It's such a, <laughs> such a nice feeling. Yeah. And, and this way you don't even have to be in a club. And because usually you're just limited to your city. And like, I think one of the guys that was actually Liam Garcia, who's also on, oh, yeah. yeah. And oh, he nice. messaged me, he was like, it's so nice, thank you for playing my music. And yeah. I don't know where he's from, but he's not from Germany. So like he would never, ever have the chance of hearing me play his tracks ever because, yeah, we're not in the same area. Yeah, so I just wanted to uh, pull up the slide because on your artist profile on Spotify, you will then be able to see every DJ mix where you're featured, just like if you're featured on some kind of uh, various artist album with uh, 20 tracks, there will be all the DJ mix compilations. So you will see... Uh, if you see these images here, this is our Proton branded uh, curation uh, mix series where th uh, the two here are also um, part of, but uh, there will also be like other DJ mixes and you can actually see who played them. You can see how many streams they got and you actually know that you as a, as a producer are getting paid for it because uh, Proton has uh, automated contracts and accounting. So everything is allocated uh, correctly and you know that you're actually getting your fair share and the DJ as well, which is uh, pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, maybe talk about the, the the lack of licensing having to do that. Did that how did that help with I mean, I don't know if you put out mixes before you've had to go through that long tedious process. But how was it taking that out of and just being able to create? How did that feel? Um, yeah, that was freedom. Uh, I did really a DJ mix with Dinox and Beckers, also with video footage and we put it out in the ZTF Media Take. And we were totally unsure about how to license all the tracks. Mm -hmm. Actually, we didn't. I wrote to the labels. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, got some, I got some emails. Yes, you can use it. Uh, no way. And then this downtaking and whitelisting on YouTube, which is uh, a whole gray area for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, this is uh, really freedom to have all the paperwork done, even if you are limited. Right. The DJ mix of Dinox and Becker, there were many different labels involved, also Mango Alley. So that's how I got to know them. And yeah, normally you would have to contact uh, every label, yeah. wait for uh, them to reply. Yeah. We had some kind huge of discussions if you could take the mix up, if you could license it to ZDF or better not. And in mm -hmm. the end, we said, okay, pff, let, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> But it's risky. Yeah. yeah. It's risky. Yeah, it was really nice because I once I played a stream that was going to be quite big and so they were like okay we're gonna white you call it white labeling i think or something like you know where you you you, you write white the listing. labels white, white listing, yeah, white, like, that's mm, it white yeah listing. and they were like okay please if you can only play tracks from labels that are not that big <laughs> which Great. i do anyway like so this is fine but if you do like like playing tracks from big labels and this is like your library and what you do then that's a problem so uh, I even took out the what the medium sized levels which might like labels which probably would have been fine but I was so like paranoid that then afterwards we would have had to rec record it again and so I am um, which stream was it uh, rave the planet okay yeah and so um, uh, yeah so I made sure that everything I played was from a really small label and then I still didn't really know was it going to go through or not and it should yeah. be fine but it was like a bit, bit nerve-wracking and so this was like okay everything this year I can use it that's awesome um, so uh, that makes it a very easy process in the sense of you don't have to think about can I play this be because will it go through or not or yeah I mean it's a bit easier on YouTube now as well for example but also there are sometimes 
Like one time we recorded a set with video and then you want to upload it and one track, yep. one track can't go on it and then yep. the whole thing again. <laughs> well, the mute only that track, yeah. right? Or the, the video yeah. is still there, but... Oh, they can get blocked too. Like, yeah, they they nobody knows decide, actually like, who when is you're blocking unlucky, what. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind <laughs> of a mess. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about brand strategy. How is adding DJ mixes on Spotify going to help you build your brand as a DJ, artist, or also label manager? I have to see. <laughs> I'm just starting out doing this. I'm just doing my second mix. But of course, you can with Alice in Wonderland. It's, it's easy to, to remember. Can, it's a good way. I mean, it's yeah. promotion in the end. Yeah, yeah. You can connect the mix series to uh, the label. and. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how this... Uh, how do you do that? But I could also do an only a listen records mixes, right? Or yeah, you could easily do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. I have to. And even bit, like I mentioned before, like mixed versions of a of a release too. Like if you wanted to have yeah. uh, a mixed version on Beatport, like Namita did, and then a mixed version here, or both. Some, some what I, what I think is interesting that the DJ down. mixes also don't have to be an hour or so. They can actually right. be pretty short no? yeah you can do a mini mix as short as you like mini and you also don't have to slice them uh the people at proton do slice them for you which is well great. for the curators <laughs> for the curation project yes <laughs> not for every single artist we though. can we can yeah. help though it's, all right but if anyone in this room makes a mix then please contact <laughs> us <laughs> we'll slice the mix for you that's a whole other thing we'll talk about on the webinar too is like the have the having to slice the mix before you put it online which we have a process for that so yeah, but I wanted to go back to here the Namito example. So on his label Übersee, or Übersee, I don't know. Um, it was basically a compilation, like I think 25 tracks for 25 years. Um, and he only released it as a mixed version, uh, which is also something that can be easily done. In this case, you don't have the whole licensing aspect uh, of it because of course it's only one label, so they have the rights to do it. Uh, but still, uh, you have a lot of possibilities uh, with our tools to create different formats and uh, play around here. Yeah. Mm. Do you see any uh, potentials in like uh, yeah. a brand strategy? Uh, for me, this was a great way because I was, um, it was right in between releases for me and it was like six months, you know how sometimes release schedules of labels, it's like, it, it's six months and then it's like, it, it gets postponed of something. And of course, your monthly listeners <coughs> decline if you don't have fresh releases coming up and monthly listeners are super important and the algorithms like it and it's very important for Spotify and it's one of the things that they really like you to do to get out content. And so this was a really great way when I did the mix, it was right in between, like I think it was like six months and so it was a three month mark where I could put out a mix. So this is a really nice way to keep like fresh content on my Spotify if for some reason because I didn't produce enough or because it like took longer that it got released yeah. or whatever. But it's a really nice way to keep your listeners happy, like to have more content, to keep the algorithm happy, to yeah. like stay up to date, uh, to show, okay, stuff is happening. Um, because I also don't think that always your SoundCloud followers and listeners are the same to Spotify and um, or whatever, Apple Music. And so I think if you put on lots of stuff on SoundCloud, that does not mean these people know. So then suddenly there's no content for six months. So this is a yeah. really, really nice way to, to keep content coming into, yeah. I do have to comment uh, one thing though. If you have a mix and a lot of people stream the mix, uh, that doesn't account in your monthly listeners as a DJ. Only if you had your own track in it, yeah. um, like an old one, then it would help, of course, but it actually is going to the profiles of the artists. So it goes directly into the monthly listeners of in, in your mix cream and uh, whoever else is in there so yeah, so if you're if, sorry if you're featured in the dj mix then you don't as an artist you don't have to do anything to keep up your your spotify yeah. actually yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. i mean but, if we go back to the example sorry no but you can yeah. put it up as an artist pick for example like you know you have a you can put it up on your profile like you can still yeah. pin it or whatever you call it yeah, in the spotlight yeah, or like, like presentation can, or, in yeah, Spotify for artists. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever you call it. Yeah, something you know something I mean. where you pin something to your profile. Yeah. 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 Um, but um, yeah. It's true, though. I mean, technically, of course, it's not uh, only because of the DJ mixes, but you can see that there's there's been an increase, for example, in this artist's uh, example, because he got consistently featured in a lot of DJ mixes because he released on some of our top labels that were really established in this DJ mix community. So 
I mean, I don't know, like you could have also have like another release that really uh, went up, of course, or a feature or something, but it uh, definitely helps uh, some kind of consistent uh, mm. yeah, streaming level. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. What's your recommendation? How many DJ mixes, uh, curated mixes should one do? Uh, do you want to comment that? As much as possible or? Uh, there's probably a... <laughs> this is actually the right slide for it. Many, yeah. yeah, but uh, a lot of our curators are doing quarterly mixes. So like yeah. every few months they'll put out a new mix. We have some that are doing like monthly. Some are doing weekly, <laughs> no. it feels like. Which is nice. I mean, it's you can choose yourself uh, how much content you want to put out, of do course. Do they have too much time? <laughs> what do these Maybe. people do in their normal life? Like, I don't have time for this. Damn. Every week. <laughs> like. The good thing is you have the freedom to choose that for yourself. <laughs> uh, so how do you guys feel about having your tracks featured by other DJs? Like, what a, like let's, you know, you see it was featured by it's horrible. Someone. And then how could that lead to, like, you know, networking opportunities or... Or just being able to, you know, what, what opportunities do you see in that as an artist for yourself? If any, it feels horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, hate it. <laughs> I think uh, actually uh, you haven't had so many releases on Proton labels yet. Yeah, uh, there are some to come, uh, so check it out. And I'm sure they will. I, today. Yeah, today. Uh, today's the release date. Yeah, today's the release date. Congrats! Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Happy release day. <laughs> um, I also have a release today. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but uh, I've had it on Apple Music where um, something got so late eight. A lot of probably some people know him. Um, he played one of my tracks and that was uh, I was like, oh, my God, a mm -hmm. um, little bit of a fangirl moment. So um, but I posted it and people were like, oh, my God. And like other people heard it and then played it like other because of course if it's a big artist that plays your track other artists will see that they've played your track because i mean mm -hmm. it makes perfect sense and so i think it can come a lot from that that then other producers or other labels become aware of your music mm -hmm. that probably yeah. wouldn't have because right. they don't follow you yet or because they haven't yeah. come across you or because you haven't released on a label that's big enough or what whatever and so that's a really really nice way for you to i think to reach an audience that hasn't gotten in touch with you before because that artist has that audience. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's a, that's a very nice effect yeah, of that. There's some weird cross uh, things happening, like people listening to the music before they would never realize that you're there. Right. Yeah. yeah. The answer is, of course, it's great to hear your own music in DJ mixes of other people. I think as far as community goes, especially in the Proton community, people seeing and, and networking within our community as well. Oh yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of remixing know. happening inside Proton because they, because they are limited to the tracks <laughs> also. <laughs> yeah. A lot of co-productions, which, uh, which is really good. Yeah, that's uh, nice. Mm -hmm. When you hear your track in another mix and they do the same artistic freedom stuff like you do, what do you think about it? I have, I have to listen to it. It's about music. Now you always have to listen. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, it might be uh, disappointing, but <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm hoping for the best. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, so after we talked about the increase in monthly listeners, uh, how does that, would that change your strategy of releasing and like the selection of the labels that you want to release on as a producer? Because you know you might get featured in some bigger mixes. Yeah, like, like Ilona said, it's, it's actually worth about thinking to put a DJ mix out in between your releases, featuring yeah. maybe one track of yourself to keep the Spotify higher, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, so basically what you're saying is, would I decide where to release, whether they're on Proton or not? Because then I would be included in a pool. Yeah. Is essentially what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Um, Probably not, I'm going to be really honest, no, okay. uh, because I think if, because I don't know for sure that that would happen. However, if it's a really good label with a good reach or I like it because it's, I think they do good work, then I will know it reaches the right people. Like, and then I know, I for sure know it comes out on that label and the audience is 100%. Like I have a guarantee that that will reach. Whilst if I release on a label and um, in the hopes of a DJ that does curator mixes playing the track that's not, you know, that's not a safe bank. Yeah. So I guess 
so I guess not. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? It sounds yeah, yeah. really horrible, but like... No, it makes sense. Of no, yeah. We don't expect everyone to use yeah. some Proton labels. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, it's nice if it's... lots of other labels too. So. I mean, it's really nice if it's... I mean, if it's something where you say it's the same reach and it's like the same, it's like sort of, it really doesn't matter who I go yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. Then, yes, I would, for sure, yeah. because that's a really nice add-on, but it would not be the main decision factor for me where I release. Yeah. 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 Have you started actually yourself to listen to other DJ mixes on Spotify and Apple Music? Honestly, I'm still listening more to the SoundCloud. I'm a SoundCloud guy who does this. Mm -hmm. But yeah. um, this whole thing is pretty new. I mean, yeah. It's, it's funny because I think earlier we said that people, more people listen on Spotify or stream music. But the DJ mix format is kind of new there. So Yeah. But you can well. upload these mixes on, on SoundCloud, which, which the artists are do, right? Yeah. So. What I usually do is I, I keep them exclusive on mm, Spotify yeah. for maybe two weeks and then upload them again. Maybe this maybe. thing will change the, the way yeah. listeners consume their DJ mixes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and see. YouTube as well is, is our highest paid paying platform to Proton Labels. And so we're, we've started our YouTube channel, a little plug there if you guys want to go subscribe. But we were posting a lot of the curator mixes there as well. And they're automatically monetized because YouTube's content ID system will tag all the tracks and monetize everything. So just another way to also monetize on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we encourage our everyone to post their mixes on YouTube because the tracks will be claimed automatically. So, <laughs> What do you think about the idea of uh, putting a live mix on Spotify? So selecting the exact tracks you could then put on Spotify and then uploading the set afterwards, like from a festival, for example. Like you play at a festival yeah. and you play tracks that can all be used so, and then, then you use it as well. This app where you have a telephone next to the DJ thing. And no, no, so just like, I think, can I, like, it, you mean as in like how I don't believe, I play at a festival, I record it and then I put it on SoundCloud. Yeah. But I make right. sure Except that the playlist I have on my stick is all Proton levels. <laughs> so because I know then I could put it on Spotify. Exactly. Later, right. right. And then yeah. it could be classified as a live at. Yeah. 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 Or besides playing. Proton, would you like to see your live sets on Spotify and Apple Music in general? Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm already sucked into the uh, economic of Proton, but it's a little bit lot of Proton. <laughs> <laughs> too, that, yeah. uh, too much yeah. Proton. Yeah, <laughs> no, I get it. I mean, I think with what I just said with there, the selection being, I already had, mm. I really struggled with, well, struggled. It took me a while, struggle is a negative. Uh, it took me a while to get enough tracks for an hour, yeah. given that I play what, what I festival slots, like three hours usually. And I really like interacting with the audience and I never know what I play beforehand. Like I always look what happens. And so I sometimes try and jump back to like, folders from two years ago because I'm like, oh my God, I played something yeah. there and I think that would really fit. So I feel unless nearly every label is on Proton, yeah, I no, wouldn't do that because yeah. it would be a huge limiting factor of how I DJ because I don't prepare yeah, my sets before. Yeah. Like some people do that. Yeah. It's yeah. just an approach question because yeah. that's not how I DJ. I think it would, I, it would limit me too much in what I do. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it wouldn't work for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The idea is great, but I think practically it's it, it's not feasible for me. Too yeah. much planning. Yeah. 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 Do you want to do the Q&A? Yeah. So uh, I think we can uh, move on to the final question before actually going to the Q&A. When can your fans uh, and we expect the next mix? Next month, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> You're going home tonight to work on it. <laughs> no, you don't have to answer this question. But check out uh, these two mixes from uh, the two of them. They're really good. And uh, yeah, happy to move forward to the Q&A. Any questions the audience might have? Is there like a buffer, buffer time between upload and upload to the actual the platform? Um, it depends. So we have this curator mix series where we invite DJs uh, to actually be featured. And there we have some kind of queue. But uh, for example, if I do my own DJ mix series, or if you wanted to do one and you're in, let's say, uh, 10 promo pools, you choose tracks from these 10 labels, you can get the mix up, I think, in, in a week or so, like a normal upload time. Yeah. Yeah. You actually can schedule the, the mix yourself with the DJ. Exactly, right? like you don't have to wait for anyone. So, yeah. and, uh, and the curator mixes then uh, take longer because... Uh, because we have so many, it's kind of, there's a backlog, and so they're scheduling one a day right now so that there can be focus on that one 
on the set, on the Spotify channel <laughs> for that day, and on social media, you know, boosting. Yeah, because you're like that. Um, promoting. That. The promotion. Yeah, we were paying for promotion. Yeah. like Facebook and Instagram and things. Yeah, like Proton that. is trying to move the the topic and the format also forward, so we um, do one mix per day, invite DJs, and that's why they are in that case. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Especially if a lot of DJs like submit a lot of mixes, um, but you could do your own and get it up uh, more quickly. Yeah. The key is to get access to those promo pools. That's like the mechanism that you use. So um, we, since it's so new that we've opened it up to everyone at this point. So if you're not affiliated with Proton, then it's it's kind of a little cumbersome trying to get access. But you would just contact the labels, and the labels have their promo pool, and they would add you. And then once you logged in on the site, you would see all of their promos. That um, when they're on, when they come out on promo, that's when they show in your feed, and you can use them. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. No. As long as you have access to the promo pools, it's a free login, and then you have access to the tools too. Gotcha. Yep. But in the end, the, the labels are in control. So yeah, as Sam explained, decide. you would have to contact the labels, and they would have to add you to the promo pool. Then you get the new releases for free, like in in-flight. But then you also get the license to feature the mixes, and you can do that easily uh, through our distribution platform, where like everybody has access, not only labels, also artists, DJs. And uh, yeah, if you're curious like how to do it exactly, we're actually going to uh, show this in the webinar. So feel free to join. Yeah. yeah. I think we've distributed over a thousand mixes and 26 million plays like today, more or less over 26 yeah. million from DJ mixes only. And we know that every DJ mix, like every single DJ mix boosts the streams from each track uh, by an average of 10%. In some cases, obviously like much higher and some like not so much, but on average 10% and the labels that are like using this actively are like around two to 300, I would say. Yeah. 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 Um, you mentioned earlier that the, <clears throat> the DJ will get a royalty share of every stream of track they feature in their mix. So where does that, where does that royalty get paid out? Uh, it's exactly 10% actually. Um, not related to what the label and the artist of the track have set in their contract. And the 10% will automatically go um, inside our automated accounting system to your royalty um, statement, which you will see on a quarterly basis. You would have an account. Does that come from Proton? From Proton. It comes yeah. from Proton, sure. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the original percentage on the track released by the label is not changed, but to the artists and the, the label. Yeah. It comes out of Proton's percentage. And then you would have an account that you would log into on Proton's site and you could see your, your royalties. We pay royalties quarterly. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so you'd just be able to log in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if one track got streamed ten times in your mix, then you would make the same streaming royalties as if uh, it was like your own track. Yeah. It still come back to you because you have more plays on the tracks, so it still come back to labels and to pro and to everyone. So yeah, everyone. Exactly. Everyone is getting paid. So, so the, that, that was the goal. Of traditionally, the project, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, traditionally, on I think some licensing deals, you would get uh, the licensing party would get fifty percent. The other one as well, and then it's not really transparent if the artist on the like original track or the remixer is actually getting paid in the end, you know. And uh, in our case, it's all set in the contracts, uh, so everybody sees it transparently in their royalty statements, and the percentage doesn't change. Yeah, exactly. I don't have an exact number. I know it's a small amount, but there since Proton doesn't actually do vinyl yet, like that's something Michael and I are looking at. We want to, we want to do that. Uh, they're doing it on their own, so they're 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 right. like doing it on Bandcamp or so like other places. For me, that I'm on vinyl yeah, DJ, right. This, like this like doesn't make sense yet. Yet, <laughs> yet. <laughs> a vinyl DJ mix on Spotify. That would be cool. That would be awesome. That'd be really cool. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness. I have been using. Mm -hmm. I give credit to the artist because that's, you know, I write the track list. And also that's awesome. for Dance TV when I'm curating the, mm -hmm. the, the, the list, the, 
DJ mixes. I, I make sure I sometimes fight with the artists of the world. You have to give me the track list. <laughs> That's I sometimes good, fail. I'll say twice. And they're like, I don't want to tell you what it is. <laughs> Yeah. 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 With the delivery, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else? Well, you can also always uh, reach us um, anytime if you have any questions or if you want to join the webinar. Um, in that sense. Up this massive QR code. Yeah, you can uh, scan. You can scan the massive QR code. Someone, code. In some case, in case someone missed it, it's right here. Exactly. Exactly. Check out the mixes, and uh, yeah, if you want to get involved, uh, feel free to reach out, and uh, let's chat about it. And uh, it's Michael at Proton Radio and Sam at ProtonRadio.com, of course. <laughs> Yeah, and besides that, uh, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, guys. It was a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.